Hello, my name is Lee Presser. This is my show. I speak frequently to very interesting people. Some of these conversations are so exciting, so intellectually stimulating, I thought others might like to listen in. This is the reason we started recording Conversation with Lee Presser. Welcome to Conversation with Lee Presser. The Southern Illinois University Small Business Development Center is a community service supported by the U.S. Small Business Administration, the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, and Southern Illinois University Edwardsville School of Business. By assisting a small business and helping it define its path to success, the Small Business Development Center strengthens those businesses, helps them create new jobs, and retain existing jobs. They provide one-stop assistance to business owners through counseling, training, research, and advocacy. Our guest today is Patrick McKeon, the director of the Small Business Development Center at SIU Edwardsville and East St. Louis. He's here to discuss continued efforts by his organization, its partners, to cultivate, encourage, and sustain entrepreneurship and innovation throughout southwestern Illinois. Patrick McKeon, welcome to the conversation. Thank you, Lee. appreciate the opportunity to be here. So, you're actually here to describe um, something that's going to kick off tomorrow. So Correct. I need to define, today is April the 28th. Yes. So people are going to be seeing this after that. So when we talk about tomorrow, it's going to be April 29th. What is happening tomorrow, April 29th? Tomorrow we launched the 2015 Metro East Startup Challenge, which is our second business plan competition, uh, $25,000 will be given to entrepreneurs looking to create jobs and opportunities in the Metro East region. And so uh, we're excited about the opportunity. We have great sponsors through PNC Bank, University Park at SAUE, the Leadership Council Southwestern Illinois, and the St. Louis Regional Chamber are our major partners that are helping support this effort to support entrepreneurs in our area. Why? Why? The, uh, you know, it's critical that we have entrepreneurship. This is region has in the past had a great entrepreneurial uh, activities and support and culture and over time we've really kind of backed away from that a little bit allowed major corporations to kind of absorb the the activity and the energy and the economic development area and now it's time for a renaissance of entrepreneurship and as you're seeing that's what's going on in uh, C city of st louis st louis county and that area we want to try to have that and same activity over here in the metro east well, all these businesses, the big ones that you're talking about, even the sponsors of this organization, they started out as small businesses oh, exactly at right. one time. Exactly and right. so I, I imagine what you're saying is that we have to have a stream of businesses starting up if we're going to have big businesses later exactly on. Exactly right. And all, if you think back over the history, Anheuser-Busch, Ford Motor Company, Emerson Electric, all were small businesses at one point. Even Boatman's Bank started out as a very small business and now is part of Bank of America. And so all those uh, major corporations, organizations start out small and that's what we're trying to foster here. So this is your second annual. Correct. So this year it's even bigger and better, right? It is. We have expanded it uh, to from $15,000 in prize money to $25,000 in prize money, plus a package of in-kind services that will be in support of that. We're, uh, we're expanding to another area beyond just manufacturing, information technologies, and healthcare. We're adding food entrepreneurship, so people are involved in, in developing and creating new foods and, and food distribution and food um, customization, um, local foods. We're trying to support that activity in our region, too. Now, you had some sort of a conference about food about a month ago, didn't you? We did. Why, we why were, don't you describe we that? Were a, we were a sponsor of the Food Entrepreneurship Conference. Uh, that was put on by a group called Confluence and it was a great opportunity to get together all the various organizations and institutions and companies involved in the area of food. We're really trying to sponsor this idea of of specialty foods being created in the field, going to farmers markets, moving on to custom producers that create pickles and jams and all sorts of you know breads and activities that can be sold in the stores, into restaurants, connecting those specialty producers directly to the restaurants so they can do localized foods, which is very big. They like to have it on their menu. They see the product as it's coming out of the field. And so those are key importance the layers that start to roll out from the economic benefit around food is tremendous. And, and we're talking about providing foods into schools, um, nursing homes, all sorts of organizations that support and provide better quality food to our citizens. And 
what was the upshot of the conference? What, 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 first, what happened at right. this thing, and then what, what is going to happen now as that it's a, occurred? As a follow-up to that, you know, uh, there are a number of groups that are involved. We had almost 90 individuals in attendance. I heard a wide range of resources and activities are involved around food in, within our region. Uh, Feast Magazine was there talking about their focus on you know, restaurants in the region. Uh, we had uh, the uh, state of Illinois was represented and they talked about all the resources through U.S. Department of, of, of uh, uh, Development Agriculture, U.S. Department of Agriculture talked about their rural programs and how they can support through loan programs and grant programs food. So it was overall um, a very informative conference, a lot of energy came out of that, and we're rolling out from that throughout the year other activities to support around food. And some of these food people, these members of the conference, these are relatively small food oh, producers. Oh, they are. For, uh, and so you're trying to hook them up, these guys that are just making basically specialty foods? That is, right. Uh, one, of the, the, one of the presenters was uh, Marku Dairy, which they make uh, specialty cheeses. So they have a small dairy farm uh, just south of Greenville and they uh, make these cheeses now off their dairy farm. They're now being sold in grocery stores, they're on restaurant menus. Uh, a great story, a family story and talking about how this move into producing cheeses has allowed them to keep more and more of their family involved in the business and grow their business and they're adding and expanding now. So that's a clear example of what food and the food industry can do for our region. But you know, we're looking at individuals who are producing you know, the, uh, the kale and the, the other um, fresh fruits and vegetables that are going into restaurants. Uh, we're hoping to help grow those businesses that allow them to then start pr uh, providing to grocery stores. So maybe you go in and you get your fresh corn and your lettuce and your radishes and your pickles from local producers through our major grocery stores. Now would Eckert be in the still in the small or is that like large? Well, Lee, every almost every business in our region is a small business by U.S. Uh, small Business Administration definition. Anybody less than 500 employees. But oh, def that's the definition. That's the, the number, number of employees. Yeah, number of employees. It's, not, it's not the dollar value. No, it's not the dollar value. There are some cases that the dollar value comes into play, but normally the standard is 500 employees or less. So Eckert's by definition is a small business, but they have done a tremendous job in growing their businesses, expanding their their variety, uh, getting involved in a you know pr providing a store and a restaurant. And that's a clear example of a food success in the Metro East region. Mm -hmm. And are they part of your program? Uh, they are. They are, will be eventually part of our program. Uh, this the start was has been in Alton. We're pl planning to expand this across the region: Belleville, Columbia, Highland, other communities get involved in this effort. Okay. Now coming back to the contest. Yes. All right. Now, first of all, how did this come about last year? Right. And then uh, what? is the process this year. Yeah. I, I tell the story that you know we last year we kind of had a little bit of a money that made available to us. We decided, you know, what do we need to do to encourage entrepreneurship? And, and we said, let's let's do a business plan competition and readily admit that we weren't exactly sure what we were doing and we had such great response. We had over 30 qualified applicants, over 100 inquiries into the process. Ended up with uh, 15 semi-finalists, seven finalists and you know, we were looking for the next great technology company and all this. We ended up with a customized vintage bat manufacturer and a micro distillery. So we got booze and bats as an <laughs> end result of our competition. But I, I say it's indicative of what the Metro East is. We still make things here. And, you know, and it's this emphasis. We were, even though we were trying to emphasize manufacturing, we were really surprised that we got as many manufacturing uh, entrepreneur startups in the process. Uh, seven of the 15 semifinalists had, were making something. And from there, uh, we worked with them to support the, the, the winner, the vintage bat manufacturer, Old Dutch Classic Bats, actually had just started his business in November and December of the year before, and five months later was walking away with a $10,000 check. Because of the growth in his business, his understanding of what his marketplace was, his opportunity to expand and grow. And, and we were pleased to have him as a winner. He did a great job. Mm -hmm. and, you, and that's the purpose of, your, of, of this whole contest. It is. Is to help 
people to better define their business plan? It is. Grow their business plan, understand what it's going to take to take to the next level, and, and be able to support that financially. Ultimately, though, Lee, it's not so much about the money. You know, it's a great thing, and it's great to have those kind of winners, but it's promoting this idea of the entrepreneurship and the resources and the opportunities that are around this, and the fact that people appreciate entrepreneurs like this and what they're doing, and drawing attention to them. And, and um, Todd Eshman, the winner last year, uh, he's gotten national coverage because he was this small vintage classic bat manufacturer. And from that, you know, he's been able to grow his marketplace. And those are the kind of things that we help to bring to our winners and the whole program. There are a number of ones that didn't walk away with a check that we're still working with. We still have great hope and opportunity with them and uh, very pleased to uh, have them as part of our process in working with the Small Business Development Center. You know, it's interesting that um, if you go back just a few decades mm -hmm. to uh, the downtown areas of most of the areas of Metro East, mm -hmm. you'd find a whole series of small businesses, right. entrepreneurs, you know, there was not, you know, Schnooks, Deerbergs, it was mom, and, chains, mom right. and pop grocery store, mm -hmm. mom and pop bakery store. Right. Um, that's changed though over the last oh, number has. of decades. Can you, I don't know if you even want to get into this, but what's changed, say from 1960, you know, 50 years later? Well, it's, it's a whole corporization of, of small business. You know, it's the moving in of major changes. And it's natural. You know, you grow, you expand, your concept works, you, you begin to spread out. Uh, you know, there was, you didn't go to McDonald's in those time frames. No. You went to the local mom and pop burger shop. And when McDonald's well, they made moved hamburgers to town, one at a time. That's exactly right. And McDonald's, McDonald's started out that very same thing in California, but they grew into a major corporation, you know, international corporation. That has pulled business away from those small businesses. It has been harder for them to compete. It's harder for them to find labor. It's harder for them to to deal with government regulation when you're small. And, and there's been a real decline in the small business area. And there's been a real decline in the past 10 years in, in just entrepreneurship in general. Um, but we're seeing now a renaissance. We're seeing more and more focus on innovation. We're seeing more and more interest in helping sponsor and support small businesses to be able to compete. The other thing, the factor that's come into play, uh, and I think you were referring to it earlier, was globalization. You know, in the 1960s, small companies, small manufacturers, small support businesses didn't have to worry about global competitors. We sold to each other. We sold to each other. We, we, the market that we had, the regional, Midwest, national, whatever else, was sufficient. Nowadays, you compete on a global scale. A business in China or Italy or uh, Peru can compete with you because of the ability through the internet, uh, through sh uh, global shipping, they can be just as competitive as you are. And they can possibly beat you out on price even though they're shipping from half a world away. So that, that kind of competition has really put a tremendous strain on, on small business. I'm sure that, that Collinsville horseradish is probably not just in Collinsville, is it anymore? That's true. There is, there is other options out there. There's op other opportunities. You, you shorten that, uh, that delivery time line, you shorten that delivery distance by being able to produce local and other locations. Uh, you know, that's one example of that it still retains some capabilities of being successful, but uh, we're working with a couple of those growers because of the challenges they do face. Now, coming back to the contest yes. itself, mm -hmm. so um, how does one get involved and what are the steps of the contest, which by the way, by the time they're hearing this, this is next year. That's, that's but, right. But let's just talk about this year. How did people, one, first contact you and what's the process from there to the end? Right, we will have on our website, uh, we will have links to our online system that a person can go online, find out the information about the contest, the rules, the criteria to qualify, eligibility, and then actually apply online. And we use a, a system called Pitch Burner. It's the same system used by Arch Grants, which is a global business plan competition based here in St. Louis. Uh, we started using it a couple years ago. They just recently uh, adopted it. And it's a great, easy to use system that people can go online and again, find out all that information. And so we'll be uh, announcing tomorrow on the 29th of April, all the information to those links and how this, people can find out how to get on the system. And they have, we've given a little more time in this first round. Again, last year we were a little time compressed. This year we're actually giving people 
45 days to go through the process to think about the idea, flesh it out, and get that information online. So let's make sure they understand. In round one, mm -hmm. they're just saying, hey, I want to participate. Right. And during that period, now they're trying to actually put together a business plan to describe to you. Right. Uh, okay. the, the first first step is to be answer some questions and fill out a short executive summary. Just kind of just describe your business. Give us some ideas of what your market is. How are you going to make money? The second phase is as they move into the semifinal rounds, they will do a, a full business plan. And so, you know, we encourage people to start thinking about their business plan when they start to apply. But you know, that first deadline in mid June, early to mid June, will be just that initial information. And then they'll be oh, given that's it. it. Yeah. So it's it's very yeah, personal. One page, right. answer some questions. Then you very pick easy. out of the people who applied, how many? Uh, we will probably look at 15 to 20 uh, in that of next that round. Whole, of the yeah. original of, group? Of the original So applicants. these are the ones that you see are most likely to yeah. succeed. Yeah, and so those are the ones we say, this idea makes sense, they meet all the eligibility criteria, we'd like to see more. And then ask them to fill out that business plan that they submit approximately 45 days later. And that's called phase two? Phase two. Now, so they've gone through that phase mm -hmm. and everybody's worked real hard right. and they've submitted this information to you, then you call it again, is well, that right? Correct, we narrow it down even to a, far, a smaller list of eight to 10 that we will do in the final analysis. And they will actually meet with a panel of judges. They'll pitch their idea, they'll respond to questions, they'll look at all the detail, and then we'll determine our winners and announce those on September 4th. And so you have a total of $25,000 this Correct. year to spread among? Cash prize of $25,000 to sp spread among three winners. Mm -hmm. uh, there's three winners or there's like first, first second, third? First and two runners up. Two runners yeah, up. So 15000 and two $5,000 prizes. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 5000 to a small business, oh, 15000 to a small business. That's It's going to be great. That can be everything. Right. In addition to that, a package of services in terms of legal support, marketing help, so continue to support through the Small Business Development Center. So we really become part of your team that helps you move through the process to help to be successful. And that's an important message that you just said, that there, uh, there's a lot of businesses that are starting out there, but they feel like they're on their own. Exactly they can right. come to you, and you, you already have been through this process dozens and dozens of right. times. A lot of experience. So that you can actually say, oh, no, you're, no, don't do this, do that, right? Uh, we, one of the core competencies of the Small Business Development Center is business counseling. So we just sat down with you. We, we uh, try to understand what you're going through, what your challenges are, what your opportunities are, help direct you in the right direction, hopefully keep you from making the uh, mistakes that we've learned from in the past, and build upon your business from there. And we do that to hundreds of small businesses throughout the year. This is, business plan competitions gives us that opportunity to get a little more intense with the business, really start looking at their information early and help guide them through the process. So when they come out the back end in that final round, you know, whether you walk away with cash prize or you're one of the finalists, uh, you'll be getting our support to help you grow your business. If you get to the finals, we still think you have a strong business idea. And whether you walk away with a check or not, we still want to try to help you be successful and, and make profit. So you're talking about that last eight to 10. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether they got the 15 or right. the five. If you're in that eight to 10, you've got a good idea. And if you keep working at it, right. it could be very successful. As we've seen from our 2014 competition, uh, we've still continued to work with those individuals who, who didn't walk away with the, you know, the first and second place prize uh, to help support their businesses. And some of those I think are very viable. It, that final round comes down to you know, the ability to present, the ability to uh, articulate the idea. And some people, you know, struggle with that a little bit. It doesn't mean that their idea is not worthy and, and, and needs continued support, and we can do that. It's almost like that Trump thing here. You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we want to encourage everybody, even yeah. if those that didn't make the second round, you know, maybe they need some additional help to try to better uh, articulate their idea. Maybe they need a better analysis of what, how are they actually going to make profit? Uh, where are the, where's their customer base? You know, they haven't really thought through some of those issues. If they really, I mean, they, they, they have an idea for a business, but they, they haven't got the idea, yeah. where am I going to get my financing from? Right. W once I have manufactured something, where, where am I selling it to? Yeah, the, it's, do you have the ability to 
capitalize this thing? Do you have the ability to make this thing you know, happen, whether it's a product or a service? Uh, do you understand what your costs are? Do you understand where your market is? How are you going to sell to your customer? What are your distribution channels? So you sell to someone in a foreign country. How are you going to get your product to them? And so those are the kind of things that sometimes they haven't really thought about completely. They have some general idea. they got some general feedback. And the idea is still formulating. The business plan competition is to draw that out. It's to make you think about those issues. And our winner from last year said he went through this never thinking he was going to win. But the, the process kind of put him in that regimen of thinking, what, you know, how do I, how do I address these issues? How do I uh, answer these questions? And as he went through it, his business strengthened, his business plan strengthened, and you can see the end result, $10,000 check. Mm -hmm. And he also has a much better focus on on a business. He does. I mean, the the, the ten thousand that uh, that you say he got that was okay, right. fine. But right. that goes away. Right, you spent. Right, right. But n the knowledge of okay, how do I make yeah. more money? Yeah. That's that's what you're trying to teach people. As Todd has said, and I've heard him say before, you know, just the experience was worth the money that he went through and the support he has got and the interest in his business and, the, and the, the attention that it's drawn to his business has been tremendous and from a dollar value point, much greater than the, the value of the check. And do you work with uh, people to teach them the value of social media, how to oh, yes, get, their, yes. get their name out there, get you know, a description of their product all out there? All of our small businesses. And you're not working. doing all this. There's, there's a staff of there people. There is a staff, right? correct. It's, yeah, I have a, 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 another full-time professional, Joanne DiMaggio May, works on my staff. Uh, we work with some graduate assistants. We have resource providers. We've got other people, colleagues, whether that's through SCORE or local economic developer or Chamber of Commerce. We all try to team together to support these small businesses. And social media is one that a lot of entrepreneurs, small business owners struggle with. And so we try to help guide them to the process, uh, better focus their attention. You know, it's going to require time and energy to do that kind of stuff. So what's your best value for your time and energy? And that's, mm -hmm. that's what the guidance that we try to give. Now, there are some existing um, businesses, or well, you, you gave me a sheet here of some other things that, mm -hmm. that you wanted to get into. Uh, specifically, what, what is this Highland Gigabyte Challenge? Yes. As a result of our small business, uh, the Metri Startup Challenge, uh, the city of Highland put together a business plan competition at the end of last year. And I will tell you, Lee, the progress from our challenge at the first of 2014 to theirs at the end of the 14 was exponential. They had a lot of great um, companies apply. In fact, uh, Chico Weber with Square Fruit, which you recently interviewed, right. won the competition in, in Highland, and he was uh, uh, declared the $15,000 winner. Um, it's, it's just another community that's seeing the value of business plan competition to attract and uh, potentially grow entrepreneurship in this community. City of Highland also has their has had for a number of years now their Highland Entrepreneurial Program, uh, HEP, and they match up small businesses and entrepreneurs in the community with business mentors. They provide some programming, they provide mentoring support, they try to foster those businesses through the process. And so, you know, City of Highland has been very proactive in entrepreneurship. City of Granite City has been another one. Uh, they recently set up a program in Granite City High School called the CEO program through Midland Institute. And they have 13 high school seniors going through this program, year-long program, connecting them to small businesses, helping them understand the small businesses and the, the business activity going on in the community. And it's really helping foster in them the idea of entrepreneurship. Uh, actually, uh, this week they're going to have a showcase of their own entrepreneurial ideas. And so they're really focusing on you know, helping foster young people with the idea of starting your own business, coming back to the community and growing small business. And you've seen a, a, re a renaissance even within the downtown Granite City of small businesses popping up. Uh, cool Beans Coffee Shop is a great example, one of our clients that has, has gone in there and made a big difference in terms of its presence and its support for entrepreneurship in the region. Uh, they've created a downtown group that's, uh, that's trying to foster small business growth. Uh, City of Columbia has done a great job over the last couple of years in promoting entrepreneurship and growth and they're looking at a kitchen incubator project. 
What's, uh, what's a kitchen incubator kitchen project? Kitchen incubator project is another opportunity to draw individuals who are involved in food production out of maybe home kitchens into um, working in a certified kitchen space. So the, the, uh, the woman who's at home making maybe a, a, a wedding cake or a birthday cake for friends and family uh, sees a business opportunity and has the opportunity to come into a certified kitchen and do that and get the support behind it, have the equipment available to him or her to help do that. Um, and it's all part of that whole food entrepreneurship initiative that we're involved with. Now we got about I don't know, three minutes mm -hmm. left here. Um, I have a couple of questions. Sure. One, uh, Chico Weber, who you mentioned before, who works in 3D printing, yeah. this is a young man that's probably at the time when he won was like maybe 25 years old. Uh, probably, so, yeah, somewhere, somewhere around there. there. Right. What's the ages of the people who are applying for your uh, contest? Is it, is it in that area or, or do you have a wide range? We actually have a, a, a business plan competition that we're engaged in right now on SIUE campus for student only. So it is that kind of uh, age, you know, 22, 23, 24, 25. Well, actually the applicants for the Metro East Startup Challenge and the Highland Gigabit Challenge range from individuals, one individual and the Highland Challenge was probably in the 60s, uh, down to, you know, that 25 range. Um, there is a, 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 a new interest by individuals looking at second careers, looking to move out of the corporate world, start their own business, you know, mm -hmm. to, to fulfill that dream that they had to be an entrepreneur and so mm -hmm. a lot of the individuals that we work with are in their 30s and 40s and that seems to be a very prevalent uh, aspect of small business right now in entrepreneurship. Now quickly you mentioned the word regulation. Uh -huh. How much impact does this word regulation and its effects right. have on people who want to start a new business? You now that's a lot of the challenge especially in key areas whether it's food you know because of all the issues around health, health and safety uh, whether it's in uh, technology, security, other issues that the regulation does come into play. Healthcare, you know, is a huge one. Uh, we have a lot of interest in supporting healthcare and healthcare growth and all that, and there's a lot of regulatory issues involved in that. So it can be a, a, a very daunting task, uh, getting licensing, you know, meeting all the necessary regulations, meeting compliance on, on regulatory issues. And so uh, that's part of the effort that we try to guide them through. Many small businesses, though, you know, if they're starting an insurance shop, they're looking at, you know, maybe starting a small manufacturing business. As long as they're complying with labor laws and local regulations, you know, uh, uh, they're fine. But uh, uh, then it gets into you know, uh, tax issues and all that, and that's, that, that also comes into play in terms of regulations. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're down to just a few seconds here, mm -hmm. but I, I will say you mentioned if somebody wants to go overseas, that's a whole big deal. Oh, Export yeah. license, import right. at the other end. That that's they need to really think very clearly and about that. We are very lucky to have as part of our operation at SIUE an international trade center. So there are support people that'll help guide you through that completely through that process, analyze that market, and really look at export opportunities. Thank you very much for uh, for Thank being you, with Lee. us today. It's, it's been very interesting. Yeah, I'm I'm really uh, I'm really glad to. Uh, Really glad that you came here and had the opportunity. Well, I appreciate and that very much, and the opportunity you give us to, to promote what we're doing. Thanks. Thank you. And to my audience, I've been speaking with Patrick McKeon. He's from SIU, from the Small Business Development. This is going to be uploaded to YouTube. You can show it to your friends. Just go to YouTube, look up Conversation with Lee Presser, Patrick McKeon. Thank you very much. See you next time. Goodbye.